This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel, and I'm going to give you an update on the stock market. We're going to go through the market conditions. Um, I want to take a quick peek at the uh, QQQ and the DIA, just so we know where we are overall. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this. Um, the conditions didn't change that much. Uh, we did have a little deterioration in the daily. Now, I want to make sure I'm covering this because uh, there's a difference between the price action and the moving averages, and you want to be able to understand that. I'd go through this in my course, but um, I think sometimes when the market's moving quickly, you want to go by the price action. So we're going to cover that. Um, and then uh, let's go ahead and start with the volatility because that's that's basically the biggest shift this week, if we want to call it that. We had an increase in the volatility, and that caused this to uh, cross back above its moving average on the daily chart. So that's the average true range of the S&P on the daily moving up based on the recent price action. That's going back 20 bars. It's going back through the last 20 bars and saying, okay, we're starting to see an increase in this. So as volatility increases, that means risk is going up. Um, so the fact that this was uh, in a positive territory in a downtrend and now it's popped back above this puts this back to neutral. Now, if this were the line were to cup around and start rising, then it would move over into the uh, negative camp. Um, the weekly line was never really rolling over that dramatic. And with the recent volatility, just this last bar, the moving average and where the price is, is it's still below it. But it's basically flat. So um, at the point, this is also uh, neutral. So we've got um, the volatility looking like it was really turning into a bullish situation is now paused or is is turning neutral. We'll see which way it wants to go from here. Is it is it going to get really volatile? If we're going to get a lot of volatility, then that probably means we're going lower. And um, if we're uh, if we're if we quiet down which I'm not sure that's the way this is going to play out. But uh, if we're going to quiet down, then, then these lines will start to turn down again and we'll have a little bit more convincing sign on the weekly uh, that some kind of a bottom is being put in. Um, the overbought, oversold oscillator is back into a neutral camp. That's the RSI 5 um, for, a, uh, for the spider or the S&P. Um, and I just like to get a gauge of whether it's short-term overbought or oversold. Um, the work that I do for my reports for subscribers shows that the sector action and individual stocks, we've got a lot of stocks that are, have positive short-term characteristics. And normally when you get that many um, into that into that position, we're due for some kind of a pullback. So that's essentially what's been taking place here. We're trying to work off an overbought condition. Um, the uh, sentiment didn't change much at all. In fact, the, the bulls stayed the same, 43%, and the difference between the two is at 11. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's just look. I'm going to start with the Dow, which I believe is the strongest. I'm going to go through the uh, conditions in the spider, don't worry. But look at the strength of the Dow. You see this move off the low. So if, if I'm looking at this, look at the move that's taken place, the drive off the bottom. Um, you can really see it in the, uh, in the uh, ADX on the daily chart, or it really stands out that we've got um, some pretty good strength here. So um, just seeing that kind of strength leads me to believe, yeah, we could pull back, but I would think there's going to be support somewhere in this zone. Maybe it's 318, 319, 320. Um, the, uh, the 18 week is around 320 in that. So that'd be something I'd be watching. I think you want to look for the stocks that showed real strength on the way up, right? And then if they pull back, um, I mean, if this just keeps gapping down, then I probably wouldn't have as much interest. But um, the uh, consolidation back towards the zero line is we're going to watch. want to watch this the next time. Now, if we look at the Qs, the Qs couldn't even get back to the 18-week. You see the difference? Look at how there is zero strength in the rally. I mean, you definitely want to look at – I know I showed the spider, but it's – this whole uh, – uh, Friday review is to show you how to go about doing this in any market or any stock. 
Look at the rally that's taken place here. It, it couldn't get the MACD line back above this prior high. Big difference between the spider and the, uh, the DIA um, versus this one. It, it's, it's making a lower high in MACD with a lower high in price. The moving averages are still declining, um, and we have zero strength whatsoever on this rally. So now let's go through the um, S&P. If you notice, um, we tried to work our way back up towards the 18-month, and we got really pretty close. I, I got to tell you, this would have been such a great signal if this moved up just a little bit more, if we were to push this up a little bit more to get this MACD up near the zero line on the weekly chart, then we would have had a, a, a pinch play, essentially. We do have a pinch play on the monthly, right? But I like it when it's a little tucked a little bit closer to that 18-month line. Still a little bit of gap in there. Um, but still, we have to respect that signal. We've got two higher lows at this point. Um, now, it's only halfway through the month, so it doesn't mean that we're going to close that way and actually form uh, if this keeps dropping. But um, but the point I'm making is, is that if this rallied up a little bit more and this rallied up a little bit more, then we'd have reverse divergence at the zero line. We'd have a pinch play on this time frame. And then this, this one, two, three signal, which developed here, we move up. We break the trend line, that's the one. Then we rally back up to test the high, that's the two. Um, and then coming back down through here is the three. So if I'm looking at this, I've got reverse divergence on this time frame, and then I have my one, two, three trigger on this time frame. Um, that is an operative signal. You can definitely take this off the daily chart. You'd have to put a stop above these prior highs if you're going to trade that way because you have to assume there's probably going to be, especially with the rising 40, there's going to be some turbulence along the way. I don't think it's just going to drop all the way down. I mean, it's possible, but I don't. I, that probably wouldn't be the way I would be playing it. So I would be looking at this trend uh this break here as a signal but i have to give it some room um i hope that makes sense now if you look at what happened on the hourly chart it was already extended and we know this is the key level right here 392 so it was already extended when it was breaking through this 392 level which would have been the operative signal on the daily we don't have a signal on the hourly we still don't. It's still too stretched away. Um, we really need this to rally up a little bit closer, and then we can take an opposing trend trigger on the uh, on the ten minute chart. So that's how I would go about looking at this. This time frame is still too oversold. If I want to play off the hourly, I can't really do it yet. It's just not offering me an opportunity until I see um, a little bit better rally. Um, now. Uh, what I'm going to do is just take a quick peek at, uh, so this is the hourly, and here's the 10-minute, and there's a 2-minute. I'm just going to show you the one trade that actually did develop today. Now, this was extended, so I couldn't really do anything with this. But then um, we saw prior to the signal, prior to uh, the Fed giving its words yesterday, Look at how this closed the day yesterday. You see how this failed at the declining moving averages? Now, I wouldn't recommend doing anything, especially with the Fed news coming out and all that. Um, but you did have a pretty good uh, signal take place uh, right at the end of the day. Um, again, I wouldn't take advantage of a 10-minute trade right at the end of the day. But if you notice what happened, it continued down. So that was kind of the signal, first signal, first pinch play. And then we rallied up here and... Um, well, it's kind of hard to see. It, uh, in fact, let me zero in on this for a second. We had reverse divergence. This made a lower high, and this was making a significantly higher high right at the moving average. And um, and then if we go back and look at what happened on the two minute, we had a pretty good opposing trend signal with a trend line. Now the the trend line broke. Up, I mean, the MACD broke above this uh, zero line enough. Um, that, you know, I mean, you probably should question whether to take the trend line break. But if you notice what happened right after, we had a move down and then we had a higher bottom and another higher bottom. We got a really nice looking pinch play right as it was crossing back down through the zero line. Now, remember, 
the ADX was low on this time frame. There was no strength in this rally. So you definitely want to be thinking take a trade. If you did the trade off the pinch, you would have gone down and made at least three to one in that trade. If you played it tight, which I would recommend in this type of environment, um, you had a really nice trade in a short period of time. And to me, that was really the only interday trade. We didn't have the hourly set up and we still don't. We're still waiting. We had divergence off the low. So that would have been a good, peer, a good sign to take that trade off. And now we're trying to work our way back. Um, with all the weakness, let me just go back to the daily real quick and let you know. I, I think if we're looking at uh, a target for this drop, this immediate move, we probably want to be looking at the Fib grid right now. And um, we're coming down towards the 382, but it just seems more likely that the 380 level might be a, a more important level to watch if we're going to drop because we still have some room in the MACD coming back down through the zero line. All right, so that's the update for the week. Go ahead and let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.